It is early Sunday morning, but 41-year-old Al Order, a data communications manager for the Grumman Corporation in Long Island, does not have the luxury of sleeping late. Al Order is the greatest Olympic champion the world has ever known. The gold medal winner in the discus in four successive Olympiads, Melbourne, Rome, Tokyo, and Mexico City. After eight years in retirement, Order will attempt to win a fifth gold medal at the 1980 Moscow Olympic Games. He will be just a few weeks short of his 44th birthday. I've been thinking about it for lots of years. I really felt that I cheated myself by not going to Munich. I thought that I could have competed very effectively in Montreal. And it just came to me, you know, just why not start again? I think in the last eight months or nine months that I've been training, I don't think there's been one time where I've been without a, a pulled muscle. I've always been training with injury. Um, the amount of injuries perhaps at certain times is, is somewhat unexpected because I'd be training, uh, I'd have a pull calf muscle in one leg and a pull thigh muscle in the other and a pull shoulder muscle. And you try to go through a training session and you say, well, what can I train? Everything else is damaged, you know? So, you know, you start working on your midsection or something like that. November 1956, the Melbourne Cricket Grounds, Australia. 20-year-old Al Order has been throwing the discus for less than three years. He is plagued by a chronic spinal disc problem which could at any time develop into permanent paralysis. Despite this, Order finishes third in the Olympic trials, but he is not given much of a chance to win an Olympic medal. It's the first time I've been in, a, in front of a crowd that large competing against world record holders and former Olympic champions and in the Olympic Games and I never realized, I never thought that I would even make it into the final round. Each finalist is permitted six throws. Al Order gets ready for his first throw. A new Olympic record. His record-breaking throw holds up throughout the entire competition. Al Order wins his first Olympic gold medal. <laughs> it was exciting. I never realized from the first throw to the sixth throw of play. The year after the Melbourne Games, Order is badly injured in an automobile accident. He's in a coma for several hours and almost dies from loss of blood. He survives and goes back into training. September 1960, the Rome Olympic Games. Order makes the United States team but is not expected to win. His teammate, world record holder Rink Bobka, leads after four rounds. Al Order has two throws left. A new Olympic record and almost four feet further than Bobka's best throw. Order wins his second gold medal. I was so relieved. I couldn't believe it, right? You know, all of the high expectations and finally pulling one out in the next to the last throw is, uh, is very exciting. Tokyo 1964. Al Order will attempt to become the first man to win three successive gold medals in the discus. In a practice session a few days before the competition, he badly tears a big part of his rib cage. It is painful to breathe, impossible to throw. He is tightly taped and given Novocaine injections. Against doctor's orders, he enters the competition. Given any other environment, I would have stopped. I don't care what it was. I can remember saying after the games in an interview that these are the Olympic games and you'd die for them. Well, I really felt that at that moment. Uh, I was there and I was going to do, do my best. Order badly trails after four rounds. The pain is so intense he must sit down between throws. He decides to make the supreme effort on his fifth throw. A new Olympic record. Order moves into first place. Because of the pain, Order cannot take his final throw, but his record holds. Al Order wins his third gold medal. Four years later, 32-year-old Al Order decides to compete in the Mexico City Games. In the qualifying round, he wears a neck brace to prevent further injury. He will remove it during the final round. You have three medals, and, you know, what's the reason to go for fourth? I just felt good at that period of time okay, um, competing in the games. I looked forward to getting back to that environment, and I did. 
After two throws, Order is tied for third place. He is now ready for his third toss. A new Olympic record. Again, it holds up during the final three rounds. Order has won his fourth straight gold medal. Al Order has never competed in the Olympic Games without pain or injury. In his four appearances, he has never been he prepares for 1980. The situation is the same. He is in pain, and he is not the favorite to win. When I started, and I kept pulling things, and it was so difficult, you know, every once in a while, I think, what are you doing this for? But I knew that, uh, you know, if I just continued for a while, uh, you know, that the injuries would d diminish, and, you know, the enthusiasm would come back, and that has been proven true. World record holder and 1976 Olympic champion Mac Wilkins is skeptical. Says Wilkins, I'm not taking it seriously. Al is coming back just to stay in shape. Well, I hope Mac continues to think that I throw for physical fitness. It'll be a surprise to him when I'm doing, uh, you know, when I'm throwing 225 and 230. Uh, obviously, I'm throwing for physical fitness. What else? You know, I'm not throwing to get unhealthy, but... Uh, if Mac is thinking that I'm not going to be competing on a world-class basis, he's mistaken. So what is it that makes this man go on? This man who has been there so many times before. Says Al Order, it is not the critics or those who prophesy where the strong man will stumble that count. Rather, the credit belongs to those who enter the arena, who make mistakes but come up again and again, whose vision is blinded by the dust, the sweat, the exhaustion of the competition, and who in the end, when all is done, know the joy, the exhilaration, the triumph, that they made the attempt, and they have done their best.